Okay. This is for Mr. Mark 1, 2004. Picture the scene. Left lane on lighted highway. Three lane highway, three lanes on each side. Picture the scene in the left lane, 57 Chevy, bright yellow. Right lane, 68 AMX, mine. This car had a 350, 350 crate motor, had a turbo 350, had uh, 354s or 355 gears in the back with a posi unit. My car had a 390, has the original 390 in it, uh, Group 19 cam in it. My car's a stick, and it has 354s in the rear. Obviously, posi, go track, traction bars, everything that came from the factory. This is our second attempt. We tried to do it the first time, and someone actually cut in front of us to look at the cars. Moment will come into the light to line up, and then they wouldn't leave. So this is the second attempt, side by side, and it's a light go. You know, light changes you go. So I'm watching the lights from the other side. You know what I mean? You can see just the thing of it. So I see the, you know, I see the yellow. So I'm ready to go. I got a stick. So I get a little excited. Who knows what I dumped that clutch at? Six grand, 6,500. <laughs> so I leave the line sideways, of course. Now it's nighttime, we're coming back from a cruise. And this is a friend of mine I'm racing. So my car, the ass end goes to the right and you see the headlights cross over his path. So he takes me out of the hole by a couple of feet, you know, for 50 feet. Then I hit second, still spinning him. I finally hook up. I take him in third. I passed him in fourth. And by the time we came up to the next stoplight, which is a decent distance away, I had him by maybe four car lengths. Okay? And then the light turned as we were approaching it very fast. I was in fourth gear, nailed for a while. <laughs> so. It wasn't, I wasn't approaching it at no 40 miles an hour, you know, I, di I didn't look at the speedometer, I really wasn't concentrating on that at night time, I'm looking around, you know, we're flying, uh, my car's got the go pack, so it's got the, you know, four piston calibers, disc brakes in the front, and drum in the back, his car had power drum all around, someone converted it to power, needless to say, I stopped, skidding before the line his brakes heated up the pedal went to the floor and he went through the intersection right i don't know at this point maybe it was i don't know 30 miles an hour he slammed it into low to try and stop himself so he went around he went through the intersection ass first <laughs> luckily nobody was coming the other way <coughs> so one and only race with the amx ever so, street racing is stupid. Uh, forget about the fact that you could lose your license, you could lose your car. Um, fines up the ass. Holy crap, they'll just keep writing. You can kill somebody. If you're lucky, you just kill yourself. But you know, you can lose control, you can kill somebody on the sidewalk, uh, you can T-bone another car coming, you T-bone another car, you're doing 100, 120 miles an hour. Nobody's walking away from that. Um, so, like I said, street racing is stupid, I really don't uh, like it. The only thing you ever see me do on the video is you see me do a burnout, and it's usually in, a, usually in an industrial area where there's no homes. So... Uh, I have many, many, many more stories. Uh, most of the other stories, somebody got hurt and killed. So, but um, they do have a bunch of DVDs out there. They've been out actually now for about, I'm gonna say about 11 years. If you ever go on to Long Island, Long Island Extreme or the guys, and they just happened to be there at the right time when all the street racing landed right where they had their shop on Edison Avenue and they were racing some serious crap out in the street and they have videos of it I think there's one two and three um, first video was just 
it's only legal. I think the second video they actually got a permit to do the, to, to do the race and it was a movie set. Or the third one. Uh, but there's a scene in there where the guy's doing 215 miles an hour, I think it was. He beat 213, 215 miles an hour on a motorcycle over the Robert Moses Bridge. And I was like, that's scary. But whatever. So if anybody ever, ever wants to see some real street racing that's not fixed, fake, or whatever it is, these guys are doing it for real. There's real money involved. There's real you pay or you get your ass kicked involved. It's uh, definitely some cool videos. Uh, I don't remember if it's the first or the second one. They trailer a couple of cars into Manhattan, and they do some burnouts in Times Square and a little street racing in between the cop shift. So, and that was all real. Like I said, they, they, they don't really race on Edison Avenue anymore. That's long gone. They moved it. They keep moving it. They have to keep, you know, they have to keep ahead of the cops. But it is a serious thing here. I don't get involved in it. Uh, actually, I shied away from those people a long, long time ago. That's why I had a performance childhood. But I don't have a performance adulthood. Because it was just a little too serious. And it was just too much at stake, and some of the people you dealt with were a little, mm, to say the least. So, and some of the stuff they were doing to acquire the money to put a $20,000 motor in a car to win that race that night is definitely not my style. Um, so, but you guys are all going to see some performance stuff coming. Rich knows the guy I'm talking about. Uh, there's a local guy here, big turbo guy, uh, into pretty much mostly Mitsubishi's, especially 3000 GT's. And I'm talking worldwide, I'm not talking about a little local schmo that does like a motor a year. I'm talking about he travels around the world to tune these cars after he sells them the parts. So when he's got his little shop here with his dyno and he sells all the parts, he sells stroker motors, he builds them. He actually wanted me to start building motors with him. You know what I mean? To absorb the slack when he's not there. But I turned that down. I didn't think that was something I could really uh, get into this time of my life. Uh, definitely be interesting. He wants me to start tuning the cars too. But I think we're just going to leave that as a fun part of my life. Because that'll steer me right back to what I tried to stay away from. You know? He's not one of those type of people. But some of the people you deal with are. And, uh... I'm just not into the illegal scene. So, but with that said, uh, like I said, I have a lot of street racing stories. I just don't want to relive them. So.